Hello my friend, welcome back to your daily dose of Brood War. We've got BTS spawning here in the top center. His opponent, B -b 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 Bisu, down here in the bottom right. I haven't casted any games with Bisu for a while, so I thought I'd hop in on this one. Um, BTS, I don't know what kind of skill level he's at. I know he's a pretty prolific ladder player. Puts up a lot of games. And, uh, yeah, he's pretty decent. He's all right. Gisu here on a barcode. Uh, imagine playing on ladder and you just run into Gisu on a barcode. God damn, it'd be scary. Uh, one of the strongest uh, PVZ players of all time. That so looks like it's in the way. I guess the Nexus fits right there, huh? Yeah, it must. Of course he's got this mapped out well you do want to leave as much space as possible behind the gateway and the, the forge to put cannons so he knows exactly the positioning here I'm gonna send out double probe with the forge now you I, I think usually you go pylon scout but maybe because it's a three-player map he's gonna go uh, forge after forge scout here um, I'm just more so analyzing the build now because today I played Protoss on ladder. <laughs> I was very hungover this morning. I don't know what came over me. Last night I was just messing around playing um, Satisfactory, which is like a Factorio type game. And I started having a gin and then I had another one. It's pretty soon uh, I was pretty hammered and I ended up um, pretty hungover this morning. So on stream, I played Protoss. It was some fun. We had a we had a pretty good time. I didn't do anything like this, which is uh, a cannon rush. I'm not that much of a scumbag, but we did play some scummy Protoss, just running zealots behind mineral patches, and you know, doing all the things that you're supposed to uh, to make the lives of every zerg player absolutely miserable now bts manages to get his drone over top of the wall here so he will be able to stop this cannon rush from coming down and he gets the probe as well look at that can he get this probe <gasps> oh he messed up the moving shot there it was really close he almost got two probes um a lot of lost mining time here but that was three pylons that were made in the back so 300 minerals he does cancel to get some of that money back but Still a sizable investment here. And even jumping the pylon over at the third. Pretty annoying stuff. Pretty annoying stuff. Uh, absolutely abusive. Uh, as any good Protoss player will be. Only two Lings gonna pop out here. Oh, wait, I, I think the Ling? Okay, there it is. Lings are coming out here. I would recommend making four because it takes so long to kill this. Pylon. Maybe he'll make a, a hatch over here or something. Two lings just takes a long time. And he's not even attacking it right now. This is kind of bad by BTS. There we go. Finally going to attack that. He's got enough money for another hatch. It's almost time to just throw one down. Um, as a macro hatch. Uh, I'm not sure that he wants to do that. But yeah, he doesn't want to do that. Because he wants to get the third hatch over at this third. And then make the... Um, layer here with his other with his 100 gas 150 minerals seven score going down right as oh a hydro den starts hmm it's like he killed the probe he was saving up that gas and it really did look like he was gonna go for a layer but he's gonna hydro bust instead let's see if bisu can pick up on this overlord here checking the forge timing we're about to pass that Four minute 20 mark, right around the time when uh, if the Protoss player is planning to really uh, go heavy into Zealot, like a four gate Zealot timing, this is when the plus one will start, but it hasn't started yet. He's taking note of that. Around five minutes or so, I believe, is when the uh, plus one will start in a normally timed plus one. There it is. 450. Okay. Well, 450. That starts. BTS will see that. He'll know that it's just a normal game out of uh, Bisu, or at least a normal kind of start 
here to this game. And with two zealots out on the map, you will be forced to make a few extra links. You can see the zealots are just outside of range of this overlord. They're not trying to um, go too far and get picked off. The plan is just to force some extra links. Force a little bit of a response here from BTS. And BTS is actually making six hydras right now. So sending the... Oh no. Oh, he messed this up so bad. Oh, BTS messed up. Um, you want to chase the probe, but you don't want to chase it around like that. You want to block it here and then come over here and block again. You don't want to uh, give away the fact that you're making hydras already. That is painful. Where is he sending this? Wait, what? Am I missing something? Where are these hydras going? Oh my god, what? Huh? What is happening right now? Oh my gosh. Is that just badness? I mean, I know BTS is not like ASL level, but I, I'm pretty sure he's like 24, 2500. Let's see. We'll get up here to the front, but cannons are already done for the most part. Four cannons are going to be ready. Uh, we don't have leg speed or anything yet, and definitely we don't have storm for quite some time. So he'll have to hold on with a lot of cannons here. Eight more hydras are in production, so definitely more cannons are in order. A little bit surprised we don't see even more started already, but here they go now. Pulling off of the gas, a prudent maneuver here. By Bisu, just to make sure that he optimizes minerals right now. Still one in gas, so that he can continue his tech path here. But Hydra's already running up and dealing a lot of damage. Three cannons will go down very, very fast. And yeah, not having enough cannons here. Bisu could be in a lot of trouble. Uh, seems like he kind of underestimated the amount of Hydra's that were going to be made here. And he's going to have to pull the probes now. There's another cannon finishing up, but with only two remaining... And range finished already. This is getting very, very scary. He's going to move some Hydras over here to the right-hand side to pick off this cannon. Looks like he might just barely get that one. He does. He does get that one. Um, backing up a little bit here, but he should be able to uh, run forward and kill off that last cannon in just a moment. Some of these Hydras are very low. Should lead with the high HP Hydras. More cannons being warped in. Desperate situation here right now for Bisu, but... He's on the cusp of holding this. He's very, very close to a hold right now. He just needs a couple more cannons to finish. And he should be okay. Whereas right now... Okay, drones are going to be popping. BTS switching it up into drone production now. Realizing he's probably not going to break this. I believe Zealot Speed is done. No. Or did I see that wrong? Zealot Speed not done? We'll see in a moment here. Okay, Zealot Speed is done. That's a lot of Hydra, so we can't actually bust out here right now. But drone production back at home means soon we will have more units than the Zerg at the front. We're, the Protoss is just purely producing Zealots, whereas BTS is purely producing drones, so... It stands to reason eventually we will overcome that. Wow, there's no Hydras here. That's funny. We'll bring some back now. Starts plus one as well. Gonna be relatively behind in terms of those upgrades, but it's to be expected when you go for a Hydra bus. This is a pretty smooth transition though, honestly, from BTS. A lot of uh, fighting here at the front. You know, quite a few Hydras were lost. Ah, that's a lot of Zealots. Yeah, he has reached that point where he can kind of start to overwhelm this. Good, you know, micro here from BTS. But he's kind of trapped against this wall right now, which is never a good situation. You want to have some space. Maybe line up like this. Have a couple of Hydras blocking the ramp. And then you can kind of back up as the uh, Zealots encroach. You never want to be against a wall where you don't have any space to maneuver. Zealots are going to come in here. Hopefully, he's got a lot more Hydras popping out here. Yeah, he does have some. And that six hatch Hydra is going to start to kick in now. Drone still popping out here for BTS. But he has 41 now. So, he should be able to just purely swap into uh, Hydraless production. A dropship and Dark Templar are on the way. 
We're going to have to see an Overlord pop here in the main base, or he is going to be in a lot of trouble in just a moment. It's a very abusive move to someone who is a, hy or a, a, a Hydralis bust player. Yeah, two Overlords going to be made in the middle. That's very important. As you can see, he's already moving some Overlords around, making sure that he's got coverage everywhere. If a DT slips into this main, it is just about lights out at this point. You're kind of riding a very a sharp edge here as the Zerg player. You just got the, the bare minimum number of drones to be sort of caught up. You have to keep producing Hydras now, and you have to be teching. Um, getting Spire right now is BTS. You cannot be taking any damage. You cannot afford to make any more um, drones at this point. But he's going to fly straight in, looks like. Oh my gosh, the Hydras here are not targeting down the shuttle. Oh, big storm. I think it's a few kills here. Not too bad. Um, but could get a lot more. If there's any more energy in this Templar, can he actually get one more storm? It could be huge. Not enough energy. Not enough energy here. And that will be driven away. The Spire is about to finish, so we should have a Scourge here momentarily to deal with this. That was a lot of drones. You can imagine one storm on that could end your whole game here. He's got almost enough energy. Let's see. Let's see. Does he have enough energy yet? No, still not enough. Five more seconds on this high Templar. Five more. That's all he needs. And five Hydras are about to pop out. He's coming back. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay, he does lose the Templar. And no damage. Yeah, pretty well held, honestly, by BTS. He did a good job there. He's back up to 44 drones. Bunch of... Zealots are going to come running in here. Maybe run into the main. See what kind of damage they can do by just splitting up and running in everywhere. Uh, pretty common maneuver for a Protoss player. A good response here from BTS. He's going to be able to handle this without too much trouble. The Spire will be targeted, of course. Standard things uh, from basically any Protoss player on the ladder. Just right-click your Zealots into the main base and try to kill the Spire. Pretty uh, pretty eight or pretty typical here, truly. Um, <clears throat> meters are out, so we are gonna go into Maelstrom. Dark Archon here doesn't have energy for it just yet, but he will soon. Five mutas only. Um, pretty standard amount of one shots of probes, so not a bad choice here to just go five five mutas only. Pretty close, thirty energy away from getting that uh, Maelstrom. Can we actually see here? I don't think he saw that Dark Archon, but he's going to fly through. Try to target down a pylon or something. Now see three cannons in that main. A lot of defenses here from Bisu. He really doesn't want to get knocked out of this just by, you know, not having enough cannons in that main base. So a safety play there from him. Pretty good stuff here. He's in a commanding position. He just needs to make sure that nothing goes wrong. And he should be able uh, to have an advantage here with this mid-game fight. A lot of Hydras pouring out right now. Lurker aspect is on the way more and more. Uh, overlords are coming, but he is severely supply blocked right now. He's got quite a bit of money to spend. The moment that those Overlords pop, he's ready for it. Ooh. Ooh. Five mutas go down very, very quickly there, but no maelstrom left over. And by the, you know, that was only five mutas, the whole commitment there. He wasted a couple of storms. He forced out the maelstrom. He uh, got Bisu to invest in Archon and maelstrom as an upgrade. So that's quite a bit of investment. Um, I, I'm not sure if it's totally worth. Some lurkers are finally up, but we need to spread everything before this fight occurs. Spreading here in the middle of the map. It's rare that you see this type of spread on Apocalypse. Spreading along here is interesting. You can't really cut off any pathways. Like, these pathways are still going to be open. So, you know, Zealot counterattacks are a real thing. They could go all the way around here as well. Um, so you're not really cutting off a lot of uh, pathways here with this play, but... You are kind of controlling the middle, which kind of gives you an opportunity to take over this area. We'll see if he ends up doing that, though. Lurkers here sit yet unburrowed. Just kind of chilling right now. Uh, fourth base likely to come down here soon. Uh, fake 
drop here into the main. This is interesting. He's going to draw a ton of units back here and then go in in one mass here in towards this uh, high ground. Can he take domination over this high ground? Big storms in the middle of all this. The lurkers are getting sprayed with storm here, but he does get on top of everything now with the lurkers. Can he kill the Templar? Trying to target down those Templar. He does get the majority of them. Taking a pretty decent fight here, but most of the Lurkers are gone. There's still quite a few Zealots. Can BTS take over this area? It's really, really close right now. Templar are coming up, though, from the right-hand side. That will give uh, Bisu the little bit more oomph that he needs to be able to take over this area. And BTS, although he has rallies coming up now, there's a few too many spells left over. One more Maelstrom. He runs forward here. All these Hydras are going to end up dying, I think. Wait a second. Looks like a lot of those units were pretty low. And he gets up here onto the high ground. Starts to make Lurkers here. This is a pretty typical play for the Zerg as well. To just control this high ground plateau. And contain the Protoss player here on three base. It's a very strong play. It often happens in this matchup on this match map. But he hasn't really committed to anything else. He's got no other tech right now. He's just purely building Hydras and Lurkers and trying to make this work. Storm in the center. Dodged pretty well here by BTS. BTS eating that one to the face, though. Ouch. Haymaker connects right on the chin there. However, he keeps pressing, pressing forward. Not quite a knockout blow to this Zerg player. And... Keeping his Lurkers here in between the two bases. He's going to actually set himself up to get sandwiched. That seemed like not the greatest move in the world. I feel like just holding the high ground probably should have been his priority. But he tries it. Tries to get down here. He's doing a lot of damage with the Lurker. Getting a lot of free uh, splash damage there. And kiting pretty well. But this is just so many Dragoons right here. Dragoons just pouring forward. We don't have a fourth base just yet. But one is on the way here for BTS. You can see it on the minimap there. Targeting down the Archon. He should be able to get that at least. But backing away here. And Bisu is on the warpath. Just shoving his way forward. Picking off Overlords left and right. Lurkers and Hydras that were rallied across the map are going to get shot down. There's hardly anything left here right now. And he truly is a poor Zerg. Almost no money left in the bank. Despite being on three bases and having pretty good saturation, 43 drones. It just seems like he he can't really do anything here. He's going to go for this kind of desperation counterattack. Archon's still here with Maelstrom energy as well. But fourth base is about to be saturated. That's so many probes. Oh my goodness. That is so many probes. That's such a risk. Dude, imagine if BTS had a, a couple of lurkers here. Because he did not check that area. As far as I could tell, before transferring those, could have been absolutely annihilated. Jumping on top of this, he's going to go after the Templar. He does get one of the Templar here before it can cast a storm. Lurkers are going to pop out just in the nick of time, running up and burrowing right next to the Dragoons. But a lot of storms landing on top of them. Well, there's no storm left now. Can he actually shove this back? Can he actually clear all these Dragoons? The Dragoon number is getting lower and lower and the Hydra's fighting them. Head on. Some Zealots will arrive, though. And it looks like Bisu just barely... Oh, just barely going to eke out a win here. Well, really, really close in that fight. But GG is called... Wow. What happened here? Did the probes actually go... Oh, okay. I guess the Nexus wasn't done. The Nexus wasn't done. The probes did, like, one long-distance mine... One one trip here, maybe. Actually, I'm not sure. Maybe he pulled everything back. Was there some sort of drop? I don't think so, right? Just go take... Let's just take a look here. What happened in the final min minute of this game? The probe's mine. Yeah, it was just one long distance transfer. Alright, guys. We're going to jump into game number two. This little two game series here between BTS and B. So let's see if BTS can put on a bit of a better game. It was still pretty close, honestly. Very, very close. It seemed like he almost busted here at the natural, but B. So just hanging on. 
as he does absolute king of pvz the drop into the main the fake drop into the main was a pretty cool choice i thought that was interesting it did force a lot of bisu's army back and he almost took total domination over this high ground but just wasn't quite able to pull it off and he really didn't have a future in this game he was just making hydras and lurkers no drones were transferred here to the fourth base so bts coming up a little bit short let's see how he does in game number two okay game number two bisu bts this is citadel and these games were played very recently on the ladder within the last week so some fresh bisu replays He's looking to be in pretty good form here. Uh, as scary as always. And... BTS. I'm not so sure about him. I think he had some, some good moments there. He had some good ideas. But uh, the flare... That you can see from Bisu. Shining bright here. He's, as usual, just such a domineering force. What will it be this time? Gateway? Indeed it will. Usually, yeah, like on a four player map, if you go for a forge fast expand, you're gonna want to scout after pylons, just kind of a rule. Um, it was a little surprising for the three player map, but I guess I understand it. Uh, once we I uh, see the way that Beast is playing out. I think I think it makes sense, honestly, to go for the scout after Forge if it is three player, which is two probes. I'm gonna send out another probe here in a moment. Um, or is he? Is he not gonna send out another probe? I guess he'll just go to the top right. Like if he didn't scout um Zerg bottom right, I guess he would just go top right with the zealot. Which is fine, I guess. BTS gonna find this probe and start to chase it down. Dealing a little damage here and there, but... Another fake uh, cannon rush here. Some sneaky stuff from Bisu. Not gonna trick BTS out too badly, though. He only brought two drones. And he's going to move to grab that third. However, he's sending the drone that already has been injured. And it's a little bit a little bit risky because we're going to put some damage on this drone for sure. With the probe. And then if the uh, zealot comes in and gets just one swipe on this, we might actually get the kill. Oh, he lets it go down. Okay. I think that was a little bit of a mistake. A little bit of an error there. He might as well have just fought the drone. If he, if he fights the drone there and gets a little bit of extra damage... He could actually kill that. However, with the second Zealot coming up and no Lings out just yet, here comes six. Um, maybe he can kill this hatchery. It's super low. The damage is mounting. The second Zealot's going to come in. Can he actually get the hatch? It's really close. 60 HP. Just like three or four swipes. And he can get this. Oh, he's, he's trying to like be too fancy here. If he just went for it, he might have actually killed it. But now he's going to get surrounded. Ah, Bisu. He loses it. Definitely the, the Zealots would get surrounded there. Um, but if you just run up and just start targeting the hatch, I think that you can kill it before the uh, Lynx kill the Zealots. It would have been close, but um, I think that might have been the case. However, just kind of backing away and like trying to like moving shot uh, the hatchery, of course, not going to end up working. You need every ounce of DPS to out damage the hatchery's growth potential anyway back here we're just gonna leave four lings at home only one ling goes across the map i think this is a good choice there could be a zealot hidden somewhere and if it comes in here and starts to damage the hatch even more then it gets to like a critical level where uh like a later snipe um by a group of zealots could happen really really fast so want to be careful make sure that you've got enough lings um make sure that the lings are in a position where they can quickly 
respond to a zealot walking into this area and yeah bts just gonna play it play it close to the chest here make sure that he's got lots of lings ready try to deny this scout and yeah he does deny the scout no idea what's coming here right now bisu just he can't know he can't know what's going on um for bts right now uh, overlord's flying in one of them gonna go ahead and obfuscate on the map this one's just sacrificial it's gonna go and find out what's going on in the main i mean bisu coming across this is a good amount of lings but we need just a few more just a little just a touch more lings here to be able to stop this like four more lings will help enough to just take take this out he's actually made six and he's got speed done so i think these zealots are sacrificial like they're not going to make it back home uh we just need to get the greats around here um and we will eventually get that now quite a few lings were made and there's more than 12 left over at the end so that goes very badly for bisu he did force these extra links to be made but it never feels good to lose that many zealots in the early game you're just not gonna have the pressure that you usually would with the follow-up attack because incrementing off of just one gateway it's gonna take a long time to get enough zealots to actually challenge these this group of links we've got like 14 still 13. that sacrificial overlord does go down but spire about to finish Two more overlords in production oh did we make a mistake here Ooh, this is one of the worst feelings i think any zerg player has experienced you're supply blocked right as your spire finishes and you can't make scourge oh man that's so painful yeah he just he really should have built more overlords here um not much else to say about that some scourge will start now some drones as well but that is just, oh, that is so painful. He's going to lose this overlord as well, I think. Um, maybe, I guess we're going to see it with this Corsair, potentially. Wow, that was a really sneaky spot there. Can't believe both those Corsairs flew right by. Didn't even catch a glimpse of that overlord. Fully the perfect spot. That is insanity that uh, Bisu didn't spot that there. Good number of Zealots now moving out, but they don't have plus one yet. It's almost done. It's so close. Four meters on the way here. Five Zealots are going to turn around and walk back. A similar maneuver that we to what we saw earlier, but this time they're actually going to make their way home, and not many links were produced to defend this attack. Sunkins are being made, though, and we have plus one armor on the way, so... It's likely that we'll go into some sort of mutilist play. Um, above and beyond just five mutas, like we saw in the previous game. It might be like a full mutilist commitment. It might be, you know, mutilist for sniping and then switch into hydras. But I don't see a hydra's den yet. Is that it? No. Where's the hydra den? I don't see it, actually. Where are the lings as well? Lings are chilling here over at the natural for whatever reason they're trying to get a drone he did get one um but and primarily importantly he sees the scourge popping and he sees that three gas is done so he knows that this is going to be some sort of scourge and mutilist build and plus one is almost done plus one is done for the corsairs he can't be taking this fight before plus one is done oh my god he's gonna take this huge anti-timing of a fight Ah, uh, he gets some connections with the Corsairs, but dude, so many mutas end up going down here. And plus one is just about done. That is really, really painful right now. More Scourge going to pop out here as the Zealots come in to start to challenge this. Base is going to be in trouble right now. More Mutalists. We're waiting for more Scourge as well. Lings are going to come through. And with the Ling sitting here on the backside, he might be able to stop this from going down. No. Good target there from Bisu. He's going to clean up all the Lings here. Damn, they do so much better with plus one. Just crush those Lings. Not even a shot. Not even a chance there. 
Things are going to try and come out and, and at least get the kills on these. And it looks like they will. So, I mean, getting a little bit of a win here. But so far, his play with uh, shutting down the Corsairs with Scourge and Mutas has just not worked out. Now, we're not seeing like a full-on commitment to Mutas. He is building a few more. But he is also switching into Hydralis now. We've got the Hydralis upgrades coming. We've got some Hydralis popping. Um, more Mutas are going to pop out here. But he's not getting like plus two armor or anything like that. He's not really committing hard uh, into this play. While Bisu is actually trying to take another base right now. That's interesting. He's going for this third right away. The Dark Templar is invaluable right now. It's going to deal so much damage to these Lings. But... The Lings actually managed to take out all of the cannons, which is pretty annoying. Getting rid of the cannons right now is quite frustrating. These Lings, after doing their dirty work, gonna head on back. Six Hatchery is about to finish, and we're taking a fourth base now here at the Mineral only. Bit of an easy defensive base, but not a lot of minerals at each of these patches. Oh, actually, it's 1500. Never mind. I thought there was less minerals for some reason. Is there less patches? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I think there's nine here. Yeah. There's only seven here. Coming in from a wide angle. That's a lot of Scourge. Let's see if we can actually get any connections on this. Can he take this fight appropriately? Ooh. Getting shot by the Archon here. Going to take a quick hard angle. Try to... Find a position where he can actually fight this. Turning away at the last moment there. BTS not able to get connections on the big Corsair fleet. But he keeps his fourth base alive. So there's that. Hydras being produced now. En masse. Nine Hydras on the way. Muta's flying in towards the natural. Is he going to go for snipes on the Templar? Could get big snipes here. One. And he get a second. Oh my gosh, look at all the hits there on those Corsairs. That was quite a few hits. I'm not sure how many Corsairs actually died, but I, I swear at least 10 Scourge blew up there. So maybe there was a lot of overkill, but regardless, some pretty decent hits there. Not what I was expecting. I thought that those Scourge were going to get absolutely annihilated. By that big group of Corsairs. But it feels like a bit of a miscontrol out of Bisu. And that's going to give some space here. Some breathing room right now for BTS. He has a lot of Hydras. He killed the two Templar. There's nothing but Zealots and Archon here. And an Archon here. So maybe for the moment BTS is safe. He needs a round of drones. He needs to saturate this fourth. And get into his Lurker production. As Templar come across the map, things are going to get scary once again. I just are going to make a run for it. Just maneuvering around here. Coming forward with three Templar. We've got, what, total three Storms? Three Storms exactly. Zealots with 1-1. One, one. I just with 2-0. These are good upgrades so far for BTS. He's kept on top of it pretty well. He is 70 supply behind, though. Yikes. I didn't realize the supply gap was that big. Lurkers are being made. Not really a great base to attack into with Ze uh, Zealot Archon. That is a pretty tough base to get into. This is much better of a target. But Lurkers are about to pop. Let's see if we can get some Lurkers in the mix here. Uh, before this mostly Zealot army makes its way to the front. We are getting some Dragoon production now. But that is a lot of Zealots. A lot, a lot of Zealots. Templar are lagging a little bit behind. Can we get some snipes here before the actual fight happens? Great dodge there. BTS dodging perfectly. He gets all three of the Templar. That's a huge move. Wait a moment, BTS. He's going to set up Lurkers here on the top side and push in towards this uh, third base. He can force a, an engagement over top of these Lurkers. He's going to be in a great spot. He's spreading the Lurkers. Why are we spreading the Lurkers right now? There's no storm 
to deal with this. Just get as many shots off as possible. Oh my goodness, the Lurker's dealing so much damage to these stacked Zealots. That was a great fight for BTS, but was it good enough? I'm not convinced. That was, like, that could have been even better had he put the Hydras on top of the Lurkers, forced the Zealots to not attack the Lurkers right off the bat, and let the Lurkers get way more DPS off. But, I mean, damn. That was already a really good fight. Storms come out finally. Lurker's gonna stack up here. Time to dodge. Does manage to get out of the way of that. But a lot of probes were killed. He's actually ahead in workers now. BTS is. So the longer this game goes on, the more chances BTS has to make this into a, you know, a, a great late game ZVP, but man, no hive. We're gonna start plus one armor here. He's pushing forward on this layer attack into kind of a choked up area. And there's a lot of storms ready to kind of take on this fight. Um, you know, there's only like two more. Okay, there's there's another Templar coming up here. Um, that's got quite a bit of energy. Pretty good dodges overall. Picking out quite a few of these uh, Dragoons. Target down the Lurker now. As the Zealots come forward, there's still some Lurkers to try and help out. But definitely Bisu is going to win this fight. And man, I am just, I'm feeling the pain here uh, for BTS right now. I really do feel like he was playing pretty decently. But he's been maybe outmaneuvered, out macroed here by Bisu. And he just d doesn't have the setup for the late game. There's the Queen's Nest, there's the Evolution Chamber, but it's looking quite dire. Base in the top right is going to be mining here, but Bisu's ahead of BTS right now. He's actually up in the top right with his army already, so he could assault that position right now. And I just I don't think that BTS can break through any of these bases with just pure Hydra. Oh, wait a sec. There's no Templar over here. All right. Well, I mean, if you don't have Templar there, that makes things a little bit different. One Zealot going to head up into the top right. Lurkers here. And Hydras. Going to move to a defensive position. Ooh, one of the Lurkers got caught. That sucks. And looks like Templar did make it down here. No, they didn't. Is he going to counterattack this base? It could be a big moment. No, he's not. He's moving through the middle. He could get caught here. This might actually end up being like a major flanking force. Or he might just go for this base. Hmm. Uh, Overlords are actually catching a, some sight on this army. As it moves in towards the fourth. Dude, he's just not got enough here. He really does not have enough. Everything going to get wiped out. That Protoss force is so big right now. Full 60 supply advantage before this fight even starts. Drones are going to have to be pulled right now. He's going to send them down to 6 o'clock. Alerting Bisu to the presence of that base. But Bisu's not going to stop here. He's going to go... Oh, whoops. Oh, my goodness. He's going to go ahead and just attack straight on into the natural. While a big counterattack is happening from BTS. He's actually hitting this base right now. I'm going to go picture in picture here. We're going to pay attention to Bisu's part of this counterattack. He's just going in. Storms here. On the natural, a lot of drones have been killed. There are some bases spread out around the map, but if you lose all of your tech, especially your hive and your upgrades here as a Zerg player, I mean, it's not going to be looking good for you. Bisu, still with a huge army. Nothing popping out here can actually defend this area. He starts Overlord Vision Range, probably by accident. It's a really good idea to actually change that to a hotkey that you would never click. Because you never want that upgrade. And it is uh, quite costly. GG is called here. BTS taps out. Bisu takes yet another victory. Kind of a walk over there at the end. But there were some good moves. You know, B BTS, he was working with some uh, interesting ideas here. I don't know what he was doing with this army over here. It was a little bit funny. 
He really didn't have enough lurkers at this area either. That's one of the things that's the most challenging to me about this matchup. Is when you're trying to take your fourth base, you have to put enough army to stop the entirety of the Protoss army up here. And here. And here. And here. <laughs> and it's like... It, the Protoss army can attack anywhere, right? It's all very mobile. Everything walks together on a couple of hotkeys. So you put everything onto four hotkeys. Your entire Protoss army. And Zerg, you, it's just not the same. You can't do that. You can't put all your army onto four hotkeys. You have to have, you know, five, six, seven hotkeys plus some for Lings, right? Uh, Lings are not going to be on hotkey for sure. So it's just, it's it's tough. Um, And you got to have a big setup over here to block this base. And there's no way that you can get up here until you have that Nidus to, you know, send your whole army up here. You have to come in from a flanking position. It's really brutal. Um, if the Protoss army is breaking through here and you come in for a flank, the storms are going to just annihilate you. Same thing goes if you're defending here and you bring your army down from here. I mean, if they're coming in from a flank, you might not see a storm land on everything. It's just brutal. Uh, I find this part of the game really, really tough. That four base, like right before four base production really gets online and you've got Hive and Nidus everywhere and it's Dark Swarm and everything. Um, that's when you are kind of the weakest against that major Protoss force that's on four bases or five, in this case, five bases, Visu. Showing us why he is the dominant force in PvZ. Always awesome to watch, guys. Thank you so much for being here with me and enjoying this. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you tomorrow.